Hello and welcome to this second in a series of quick videos about the different UML SysML diagram types in RAPSD. In this one I'm going to show class diagrams, a stalwart of the unified modeling language since 1997. I'll start by creating a completely new project. I'll choose uh, the project type as default, which essentially means in RAPSD create a UML project. And I'll do this in my RAPSD 8.4 projects folder here. I've chosen not to add the perspectives toolbar as I don't really want to confuse people as to what is or isn't available in the join toolbars. And as you can see, when I create a new project, Rapsdy will always create an object model diagram at the root of the project. So I'll just delete that. I can then right click the default package and choose to add a new class diagram. So I'm using Rapsdy 8.4 here, but the class diagram has been drawable since the first version in 1996, and that's a very long time ago. As an aside, for those who know a bit more about Rapsdy, you'll notice that a class diagram is a new term stereotype applied to the base type of diagram called an object model diagram. The object model diagram in Rapsdy has both objects and classes available in the toolbar. The class diagram is therefore a subset of this, which concentrates the focus and therefore simplifies things a little. There's nothing to stop you from creating a class diagram using an object model diagram, of course. Fundamentally, class diagrams in UML are a notation for describing object-oriented relationships between, not surprisingly, classes. Classes are types of things. Um, I might, for example, describe that within my design, there is a type of thing called a house, and there is a type of thing called a door. I can then use the class diagram to show the relationships between these types of things. For example, that a house has a door that it knows of in the role of its front door. The filled in diamond here is a type of object time relationship called a composition. And we can read the composition as a has a relationship. A house has a door that it knows of as a front door. It may have another door with a different role, of course, a back door. Within an OO design, there are four core object-oriented relationships. Associations are a key one, particularly in an object-oriented software design, typically between peer types. Using an association, I can say that a house is associated with a road. The road is associated in the role of its road, which represents the road that it's on. It doesn't own the road, it's more like their peer objects. An object-oriented software design can be built up by establishing relationships between collaborating objects. There's also this idea of generalization. There is a relationship. For example, a semi-detached house is a house. This means it inherits all of the relationships, attributes and operations of a house. This means that it has a front door and it has a road that it's on, but it also has new relationships. A semi-detached house is actually half of a building for those in the UK that live in them, they know that a particular instance of a semi-detached house shares a wall with another semi-detached house. We could show this a type of object-oriented relationship called an aggregation. I could say that the semi-detached house has an aggregation relationship to a wall class in the role of its adjoining wall. Aggregations are like shared compositions and the notation is a diamond that's not filled in. We read this as a has a relationship where the particular object is shared. It's a bit like modeling placebo really, particularly if you're doing code generation, as they're treated in the same way as associations. There's two other relationships I'll quickly show. The first is realization, which is a type of generalization. We could use this relationship when we're working on interfaces. Interfaces are a concept in UML that allows us to describe a group of method signatures independent of their implementation. They have a direct relationship with programming language implementations, of course. For example, I could create a type of interface called an iLock with two operations, lock and unlock. The iLock interface here is shown in italics, which means that it's abstract and it doesn't define any implementations for these operations. I could then define a concrete class called a lock that would realize these operations. 
You can see that the realization is a new term stereotype as well, and it's applied to the base generalization type in RAPSD. I can use the Realize Base Classes wizard to copy the unimplemented operations from the interface into the concrete class if I wish. I need to set the display options if I want to see them on the diagram though, as RAPSD will only show explicit operations by default. These operations are not shown in italics as they will have generated implementation bodies. It's worth noting that UML is more than a visual notation. UML models can be used to generate code, and that's one of the values you can get from a modeling tool like RAPSD Architect for Software or Developer. I'll just change this to compile with SIGWIN GCC compiler, and then I'll click the Generate Make Run button here. I can then use the Active Code view to view the generated C++ code, as C++ is the unit type for these elements in the model. There's an officer there's an obvious relationship between the UML classes and C++ because C++ is an object-oriented programming language and it has the concept of classes. For example, a composition relationship is captured as a data member of the owning class, which means that it will be constructed at the same time, whereas an association or aggregation is captured as a pointer to an object. The generalization is obviously captured as an inheritance relationship, as is the realization. These are all essentially object-oriented relationships. Finally, let me just show you another type of relationship that we might draw on a class diagram. And it's not really an object-oriented relationship. I'll create an example here using the standard IO library. Essentially, a standard library that contains functions and types for input and output. I can represent the include as a dependency. To make this explicit, we would stereotype the dependency with a usage stereotype. This also gives it the ability to specify whether the hash include should be generated in the specification or the implementation files. If I mark the class with the property users external, then Rhapsody would not generate code for it. And this would mean that Rhapsody would generate the directive with an angular syntax rather than quotes. Dependencies are not really an object-oriented relationship. However, they do come up in an OO design. And, and if we reverse engineer C code, it's also the relationship we get the most. So that's it really. The class diagram is really a core diagram that allows us to express object-oriented relationships between classes. And there are four types of object-oriented relationship we might draw. Associations, compositions, aggregations, or generalizations. Hopefully that helped. My name is Fraser Chadburn. I specialize in training and consulting for Rhapsody and in particular setting up Rhapsody for particular project needs through the use of automation and profiles. If you do have any questions, then please don't hesitate to contact me and here's my email address.